Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. In our previous class, we had studied about contact forces like muscular force and frictional force. Next, we had also studied about non-contact forces like electrostatic force, magnetic force and gravitational force. In today's class, let us study about the last topic of this lesson that is pressure. You can see a wooden plank in front of you. Tell me if you try to push a nail into this wooden plank by its head, will you be able to succeed? Now try to push this nail by the pointed end. Will you be able to do it this time? Yes, you will be able to do it this time. Now try to cut a tomato with a blunt knife and then with a sharp knife. Which one do you think is easier to do? Of course, we know that it is easier to cut with a sharp knife. It is because the area on which the force is applied, that is the pointed end of the nail and the sharp edge of the knife, plays an important role in making the task easier. This force that is acting on a unit area of a surface is called as pressure. Pressure can be written as force upon area on which it is acting. That is pressure is equals to force by area. Symbolically it can be written as P is equals to F by A. Where P, uh, where P represents the pressure, F represents the force and A represents the area. You can see that this area is smaller when compared to this area. Remember, smaller the area, the larger will be the pressure. And larger the area, smaller will be the pressure. Hence, the force that is applied with the hammer is sufficient to push the pointed end of the nail into the wooden plank. Whereas the same force that is applied with the hammer is not sufficient to push the head of the nail into the wooden plank. Now just think for a while, why do the school bags have broader straps? Why not very thin straps like a thread? Remember I told you that smaller area, larger will be the pressure. And if the area is broader, pressure will be decreased. Thus the school bags are provided with broader straps in order to reduce the pressure on the shoulders of the child. With all this, we can say that solids exert pressure. Now, what about the liquids? Do you think they exert pressure? In order to know this, let us perform a small activity. Take an empty bottle. Make four holes near the bottom of the bottle, like this, with a sharp pointed thing. But make sure that the holes are at the same height from the bottom. After this, fill the bottle with the water. What do you observe? Streams of water comes out of the holes and falls at the same distance from the bottle. It is because liquids, they exert pressure on the walls of the container. You might have also seen fountains of water coming out of leaking pipes. It is also because water exerts force on the walls of the pipe. Most of us have pushed a floating ball under water and have watched it pop up in the air when we let it go. Do you know why it is so? It is because the ball is less dense, that is less in weight when compared to the water. Also, because the water exerts upward pressure on the ball, hence it pops up. With this, we can conclude that even the liquids exert pressure. Then what about the gases? Do you think they exert pressure? You know that there is air all around us. This envelope of air around us is known as atmosphere. Pressure that is exerted by this air is known as atmospheric pressure. Remember, atmospheric pressure goes on decreasing as we go 
upwards. But before that, let us study the layers above of the atmosphere. It is troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. In this picture, you can clearly see that here the air molecules are much denser. Whereas when you move upwards, the air molecules become lesser. This means that as you move upwards, the air pressure decreases. Due to this reason, mountainers, they carry oxygen cylinders with them. It is because of the atmospheric pressure difference that you are able to fly your kite up in the sky. That is, air pressure above the kite becomes less and air pressure below the kite becomes more and pushes upward. Tell me what is this? A rubber sucker. Now, press it hard on a smooth surface. Do you think it will stick to the surface? Yes, it will. Now, try to pull it off the surface. Will you be able to do it easily? No, it is not that easy to take it off. Do you know why it is so? It is because most of the air between the sucker and the smooth surface escapes out and also because the pressure of the atmosphere is acting on it. Now, in order to pull the sucker off the surface, the applied force should be larger enough to overcome the atmospheric pressure. Remember, huge amount of atmospheric pressure is acting on every object on this earth. That means, this huge amount of atmospheric pressure is acting on the living beings too. Then why don't we get crushed under this huge atmospheric pressure? It is because even though the atmosphere exerts pressure on our body, our body exerts back same amount of pressure to the atmosphere. Thus the pressures gets balanced. You know that when you blow a balloon, the size of the balloon keeps on increasing. But when you blow too much of air, that is when the air pressure increases on the walls of the balloon, the balloon bursts. This shows that even the gases exert pressure. Now let's take a quick look at the summary. The force acting on a unit area of a surface is called pressure. Pressure can be written as force upon area on which it acts. Liquids exert pressure on the walls of the container. Envelope of air around us is known as atmosphere. Pressure exerted by air is known as atmospheric pressure. Gases exert pressure on the walls of their container. Thank you. Keep watching.